Why do we need an oscillator circuit? Hi, I wanted to share with you some information about an inverter circuit I have been working on. It is a 220 volt inverter circuit designed using two NPN transistors and two capacitors. The purpose of this circuit is to create an oscillator that allows us to drive the power transistor base and effectively operate the inverter circuit. In my testing phase, I supply 12 volts to the circuit. including both negative and positive voltages, resulting in a current consumption of approximately 35 milliamperes. I am pleased to report that the circuit is functioning well. In the realm of oscillation generating circuits, there are various options like IC555 or TL494. I have previously demonstrated the creation of an oscillator circuit in a video, showcasing its ability to illuminate incandescent lamp. If you have the time, I recommend watching that video for more insights. While using frequency generation modules is a simpler approach for producing oscillations, building the circuit ourselves allows us to appreciate the process and enjoy the sense of accomplishment. The question that arises is, why do we need an oscillator circuit? Why not directly input DC voltage into the transformer to generate 220 volts in the secondary section? This is a topic I would be happy to discuss further. It is a circuit designed to function as an inverter, utilizing a switching transistor and a transformer. This is the primary winding of the transformer. The primary winding you see here is a fundamental element of the transformer. As you are aware, a transformer can house multiple winding, commonly referred to as coils. Depending on the applications, this coil can have two or three terminals, serving as the transformer outputs. The wire I have placed here serves as an illustrative example. When a direct current voltage, such as 12 volts, is applied to one end of the coil while the other end is connected to 0 volt, a short circuit is created potentially causing harm to the coil or the voltage source. However, if we repeatedly connect and disconnect this voltage, the short circuit no longer occurs. To accomplish this, we require a component capable of rapidly connecting and disconnecting this voltage. Transistor or MOSFETs are commonly employed for this purpose. The following elucidates how we achieve this. The wire represents the primary winding of the transformer and a transistor is placed here. Let's assume it is a NPN transistor with collector, emitter and base terminals. Voltage is applied from the top, for example 12 volts. Under normal conditions, with no voltage on the base, the transistor is in a cutoff state, implying no connection between the collector and emitter. Consequently, positive voltage never reaches zero volts. Upon applying voltage to the base, the transistor turns on and remains in an activate state, creating a short circuit. Positive voltage traverses the coil and eventually reaches zero volts. The prevention of a short circuit is achievable by controlling the current in the circuit and rapidly switching it. Therefore, we employ a transistor or MOSFET. Given the high switching speed in switching circuits, we need to control the base pin using an oscillator circuit. When the current enters the coil, which possesses a ferrite core, a magnetic field is generated, 
inducing voltage in the second winding. This secondary winding is determined by the number of turns and its thickness, creating a proportional current. Hence, it is evident that to establish a switching state and a magnetic field in the transformer winding, an oscillator circuit is imperative. Now, I will draw the circuit for you. In this circuit, two NPN transistors with collector, base, and emitter terminals are used, assuming that these transistors are C1815. Two polyester capacitors are also necessary. A reduction in the capacitor's capacity results in an increase in oscillation speed. I utilize 18 nanocapacitors labeled 183. The capacitors are connected to the base, with the second pin of the capacitors linked to the collector of the transistors. To provide base voltage, a resistor is introduced to mitigate base current. This resistor is instrumental, is turning on and the transistor and possesses a value of 10 kilo ohms, with colors brown, black, and orange. Next, the transistor base are connected to voltage where this line represents the positive terminal. The collectors are connected through a 220 ohm resistor to reduce the current, eventually reaching the voltage line. Voltage enters the collector through this line and the 220 ohm resistor, reaching the collector. This voltage via the 10 kilo ohm resistor activate the transistor. The subsequent transistor follows the same principle. As these transistors are NPN, the emitters are connected and subsequently linked to ground, which signifies zero volts. The output of this oscillator circuit is observed at the collector of this transistor. A 100 ohm resistor is implemented to reduce the current and connected to the base of the switching transistor. The completed oscillator circuit comprises these two transistors labeled C1815 to 18 nanofarad capacitors, to 220 ohm resistor, to 10 kilo ohm resistors, and a 100 kilo ohm resistor. To proceed with the creation of power inverter circuit, the incorporation of a switching transistor and transformer is necessary. The chosen transistor for this purpose is 13009, an NPN switching transistor. This serves as the power transistor, featuring base, collector, and emitter terminals. As per the nature of an NPN transistor, the voltage enters the collector, and the emitter is connected to ground. The primary winding of the transformer is placed on the collector. The wire depicted here represents the secondary winding, generating approximately 220 volts. In this example, I am using a computer power supply transformer. The 220 volt output is on a side with fewer terminals. The voltage is introduced into the primary winding and upon passing through, it reaches the collector of the switching transistor. This is the same voltage utilized in the oscillator circuit. 
This is the entirety of the circuit, featuring the positive voltage entering, transforming through the transformer, and eventually reaching the collector. The emitters of all transistors are interconnected. The circuit output is directed to the middle pin of the C1815 transistor, which is connected to the base of the switching transistor through a 100 ohm resistor. The base of the C1815 transistor is positioned on the right side. I will activate the circuit to analyze the waveform on the oscilloscope. The probe's clamp will be connected to zero volts, and the probe itself will be linked to the base of the switching transistor. I enter the voltage into the circuit. A square waveform is displayed. The frequency is above 13 kHz. If we increase the capacitance of the 18 nanocapacitors, the frequency decreases. Avoid touching the secondary part. It gives an electric shock. I express my gratitude for your time spent watching the video.